School, and um, they've really been my inspiration. They're written about in all three of my books in my trilogy. So the first thing I want to do is um, extend to my daughter, still have a massage, that um, you can, it's a wrist massage. <laughs>
And so that was the beginning of my journey, and over the holidays, I had that, that surgery. About six months later, I had complications. I had my implants um, taken out, replaced again. A week later, I was sitting at the Susan G. Komen office in a board meeting. I was on their board for three years. Um, not feeling well that evening, and I felt great five days prior after I had the surgery. And two days later, I'm being rushed back into the hospital, and I got nurse off. And so my implants were coming back out, and another set were going back in. And, um, and then a year later, another complication. So within 18 months, I had my implants replaced four times. So it's very unheard of. And then I had other complications and got breast cellulitis. So as a result of all of that, I wore a lot of bras. <laughs> yeah. A lot of uncomfortable, ugly, uncomfortable bras. That's basically what I have to say. And I did most of my surgeries on a Thursday so that I could return to work on a Monday. The working professional, um, at the time working for Comcast Spotlight and bringing them $40 million worth of business, running a staff of over 16 and never missing a beat. So that's the type of person I am, running the household, managing with my, my two children at home, fairly young at the time. And I said, you know what, how do I hide these things? They were just atrocious. You know, I was actually wearing, at the time, my husband's shirts and trying to hide them and trying to hide the tubes and the drains and all of this. And I was just humiliated and disgusted with what I had to wear. The week that I was diagnosed, I just want to say, the only way that helped me to get through it, I live in New Providence, New Jersey. Right down the street is Summit, New Jersey, and was the Susan G. Komen Pink House. And I thought the only way that I can give back was to go walk through that door and to see what I could do to help them. And so I then got very involved in the North Jersey affiliate of Susan G. Komen, and I gave back my time. And I, it began a um, mutual partnership, and we have tonight the executive director of Susan G. Komen North Jersey with us, Jenny Rayola. Thank you, Jen, for joining us. They say that you're a survivor the day you're diagnosed, but I personally count myself as being a survivor from the last surgery because you really don't feel like you're a survivor until you complete that whole process of your last surgery. So I wasn't really feeling well on that bandwagon of feeling well again until I was really healthy. So um, it really was my journey to the pursuit of happiness. And I literally knew nothing about fashion, but what I did know was a lot about marketing, media, technology. My background has been 25 years in digital media and technology. I started out in the technology industry and moved over into media and marketing. So I literally, from the internet, found that image, and I wanted to share that with you, just some mannequins, and I started sketching a design on that. And I wanted to take advantage of my name, Criss Cross, um, Chris, I kept as my name, which was my first husband's last name, and I knew somehow I could brand that name and utilize that, and <laughs> utilize that in a name to cross, somehow cross, integrate a cross in, you know, throughout the whole design. My first husband died in my arms um, three days after his automobile accident, and when he died, um, we were never able to have children, and so I made a commitment to him that I would carry his name throughout my life. And so I have, and I wanted to somehow carry the legacy of his name in this brand. I finally found my designer, and I'd like to introduce you to Judy Knight Runyon. Um, Lo and behold, after yep. meeting in New York, we live about 30 minutes away from each That's other true. in New Jersey. So we have had many late nights, many early mornings. She's yes. been fabulous. I don't think I've worked with anyone that has been so easy to work with throughout my whole career. She got it from the get-go, from the beginning, and she's a former Victoria's Secret designer. Mm -hmm. And why don't you just say two minutes about your background? Uh, well, I've been in the fashion industry for <laughs> 30 some years, so I do have a, a lot of background in stretch fabrics, intimate, swim, active. And so all of this background has been put together to be able to create uh, an intimate bra for mastectomy. Now, a woman has to go through so much during breast cancer. 
she should not have to be put up with the bras that are just horrible and uncomfortable and not flattering and doesn't make her feel wonderful. Um, so I, it's really important to me. I, you know, I have had friends, family. Um, unfortunately, many people in my life have also had to um, live through this, and thank, thankfully, you know, all of them have lived through it and can talk about it and know what it's like. And so this was also a mission for me uh, to create the best bra that I possibly could. And having um, worn it myself quite a long time, you know. We've been modeling on each other, so that's how yes. <laughs> and, and I wear it for hours and hours at a time so that I know what it feels like and, and I have that advantage. And so um, I can say it is the most comfortable bra I have ever worn. And I, I will say that. And, Thank you. And not having, to, you know, unfortunately not having to go through the breast cancer part of it, but to feel um, what it feels like and um, how it holds, how it compresses, um, how clean it is with no threads that are uh, chafing, um, none of the uh, issues that are with the other bras. So this is simple, clean. Um, I can go into some of the technology of a lot of its bonding technology, which is actually losing, using glues instead of sewing thread, so you don't have the abrasion of thread. Very important for comfort. So, thank you. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Trent to talk about the fabric. And we're, while he's talking, I'm going to show you um, samples, and you're all, all going to be able to feel the garments. Thanks, Jean. You're First welcome. of all, uh, the story is remarkable. I didn't know the whole thing. And hearing that, uh, we've worked with a lot of companies at Hologenics, you know, from the biggest to the smallest, and never, ever have I met anyone as passionate as you. Um, this is truly amazing. I actually enjoyed the phone calls in the morning from you to actually discuss the product. Um, so I'll explain, you know, the difference in her bra, what's really going to change the game, in my opinion. Uh, it's a fiber called Cellient. It's using the word cell and relying. So we're relying on your cells for life. And what this product does is we found a way to embed certain minerals in the core of the yarn. They're never going to leak out, never going to wash out. They're in there for, for good. And what these minerals do is they absorb the heat from your body. And body heat is, you're always emitting body heat at all times. And right now it's being lost. It's not being used. So this body heat is absorbed by these minerals and they convert it into infrared. I'm sure everyone's heard the term, you know, infrared for facials, for uh, sports medicine, various applications. And what this does is it's clinically proven to increase circulation and blood flow in the tissue. So imagine a bra that needs a healing purpose where you can actually provide that on a physiological level. So this is completely you know, game changing. This isn't just a new fabric, a new color, a new cut, a new design, a new feel. This is changing the DNA of the product for the better. These products are actually going to help speed up the healing process of people that need it the most. This is a market we've never been in before, and Gina is the first to kind of take the lead on this and really change this whole industry. And we've been behind her. You know, we met her a little while ago, and she just recently you know, came back and has really brought this vision to light, and we've been behind her 100% of her since. We introduced her to a friend of ours uh, named Gary Peck, who owns the Esper. He was a big executive at a big sports brand, and he left to start his own company of sourcing to take people like Jean and her idea and turn it into a finished product. So she has a great manufacturing relationship now and also a great technology partner behind her. So I'll be here you know, throughout the night to answer any questions, but this product is amazing and what she's using it for is probably one of the greatest applications we've seen to date. You know, We have FDA approval pending, which is gonna be happening soon, which will only add to her success. So she's definitely found the right technology partner and this, I was, we're so happy to have met you, Jean. We appreciate all you've done. I have over 20 different proprietary designs that I've created with the Criss Cross Collection. So uh, it will be for every phase of breast cancer. So for women, that means from lumpectomy through um, mastectomy, and also for women who have had augmentation surgeries, uh, whether it's single or bilateral. And it's also for men who, have, um, who need to uh, wear a garment for breast cancer. So um, now I'd like to show you some of the garments. So a man today currently doesn't. Oops, here we go. So a man is uh, where's Dr. Lucy? 
Pfeiffer, you can come up here too. We have Dr. Tracy Pfeiffer, who's a plastic surgeon here in the New York market with us. Um, um, Tracy, you can speak to how this is really done today as well. Um, this is a, a wrap, you know, with gauze and, um, you know, ace bandage, ace wrap, and, and men really don't have um, a garment, if you will, a proper garment for, for wearing in the market today. I'm just going to spin this around. And using the Cellion fabric, this is totally a prototype, it's not finished, but, um, you know, it's using the Cellion. It's, um, it's totally in its um, preliminary stages, but it will, right now it's in the middle because, you know, depending on if you have it on both sides, it will fall in the middle, but if it's crisscrossed, you know, you could wear it to one side. It'll be finished at the bottom. But what's fabulous about the fabric is there's no seams. There's no seams at the top, so that's what makes it comfortable. There's no elastic. There's no need for it because the compression that's built into the fabric is thick enough and it holds itself up. So I don't know if you were able to stretch what was in those picture frames, but it has enough stretch in it. I'm gonna put this down. Thank you. Um, we'll just step around and just show you here are some of the samples that I have here. But the garment itself, it, it stretches, and, and this is the compression. Now this is just a single layer of it, but what Judy was talking about is that it has a film and we're double layering it and putting a film in the middle so that it gives you that compression compared to the traditional uh, bras that are on the market. So this is um, what I wore. This is exactly my bra. When you walk out of the OR room, you're stuffed with gauze, you're stuffed with a lot of different types of fabrics, gauze underneath, gauze all over. If you have you know, incisions on your arm, depending on the lip notes you have taken out, um, because you have, if you've had a single mastectomy, you have two of these tubes coming out on your side. If you've had a bilateral, you're wearing four of these. And what's uncomfortable about this is that you've got four of these tubes, two on each side, hanging out from you, and there's nowhere for them to go. There's no pocket, there's no place. These are wrapped around you, they're fairly long. And having this connected, this is inside of you, this part of the drain is inside of you, and it, it I hope I'm not grossing anyone out, but it sucks the fluid out of you around your breast, and all of the fluid then drains into the tube. It fills up and it, it weighs you down, and having all of that fluid pull you down, pulling against your skin, which it's stitched into your skin, really, really gets uncomfortable, and you have to empty this numerous times throughout the day, and um, until these are depleted, they don't come out. So you have these in for about a month. And uh, they come out one at a time. And do you want to talk about that process a little bit? What she was saying is, you know, totally 100% accurate. After you have the surgery, your body's going to produce a lot of fluid in order to heal uh, the area. But of course, you don't want the fluid sitting around the expander and or the implants. So these drains are put in, they have holes in them, and when you um, get the air out of the collection chamber and you seal it, it will create a negative suction and pull the fluid through the drains. So we make a separate incision in the skin and pull the drain uh, through the skin, and then the question is, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to manage it? And usually, the drain will come out and your bra strap is pressing right on it. So. If you don't put some padding underneath the drain, you're going to get this big dent in your skin. And the other thing that people have to struggle with, like Jean was saying, is exactly where are you going to put this. So are you going to tuck it under your shirt, which as you've mentioned, you don't really have the right clothes to hide it under your shirt. You're wearing your husband's shirt for a month. Or you can compress it and put it inside your um, pants. But managing the drain, where to put it, how to hide it, how to be comfortable with the drain because it does tug on your skin is really a major issue for all patients. This is one of the new crisscross bras. So here we go. Here's one of them. You're going to see it on a model in a minute. Um, it has straps coming through it that are going to hold it up. What's fabulous about this? Um, uh, the bra itself, one of the healing factors in addition to the, the, the fabric that you know we were talking about with Trent is I've made it with magnets. There's no Velcro. Most of these um, garments here, you can you know wake the neighbors, I used to say, with you know taking the Velcro off. 
This strictly has, with the crisscross design, um, magnets here, which is also a form of healing in the process. And um, it has adjustable straps, and it still provides you the compression. Um, the hooks here on the side come through very easily, and these will come off. And so it actually looks like a sports bra when you're done after your 30 day experience with the tubes. You can actually take this off and unhook it and continue to wear it through your healing process because you end up needing to wear a tight compression bra sometimes for six months. So um, whether it be in this form of a bra, I have other uh, designs as I mentioned um, that will transition you post 30, 60, 90, 120 plus days that will be uh, designed and manufactured and that's part of what I'll be working with with the S Group and Sally on. And, um, and then I have intentions to design those clothing garments that will go over it so that you can um, hide the tubes and the garments. So um, at this point, I'd like to show you our models. This is Essence Samaje with Avenged Fashion Magazine. We're in New York City at the Martin Lawrence Gallery for the launch of Criss Cross Intimate Apparel by Jean Criss. Standing next to me is the creative of Criss Cross, Jean Criss. Hi, Jean. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Now, I know you are actually a breast cancer survivor of seven years. Tell us more about the stages that you had experience. Yes. Um, I'm a seven-year cancer survivor, and I went through a bilateral lumpectomy with radiation, and then I transitioned to bilateral mastectomy with reconstructive surgery, and then I had multiple surgeries after that. I had some uh, various infections. Well, you're very strong, and congratulations to your success in this event. It's beautiful. What makes the Criss Cross Bra so special? I know it's amazing. Yes, I integrated a lot of techno new technologies into the bra that are really for advanced recovery. So the fabric and the design and also some of the healing factors that are uh, designed into the bra. So I'm using magnets as an example instead of uh, Velcro or instead of hooks or other types of design elements. I'm also using a special fabric which is called Saliant by Hologenics. And the, t the type of um, Celion fabric is actually an advanced healing fabric that has infrared technology used in it for advanced healing. So kind of like thermal heat energy? Yes. And um, the design itself is also crossing over so that it doesn't have any type of invasive uh, zippers or any type of um, uh, lace or anything that's going to be bothersome to the survivor. So it's not going to be rubbing against the breast or any of the upper body that was that I experienced being extremely uncomfortable. Now I saw some of your bras this evening and I know you have them for men and women. They look a little different. Tell us about the types of shapes and styles you have. 
Yes, well, I have um, a couple different colors that I've introduced this evening, and uh, the lace was just something new that I wanted to introduce for the fashion show this evening. So there'll be a variety of different types of bras and camisoles that will be coming out, and those are part of the 20 different designs that are, are ready. Yes, I have t over 20 different patents. And um, uh, the men's, um, I'm not going to call it a, a bra or brosier, it's really a vest, uh, is a uh, also going to be designed as well. That's great. I love the advanced technology, how you're fusing the thermal heat energy with the bra and just the fashion and making everybody feel happy and kind of helping throughout the process. It's great that you have have this here. Yes, so the, um, the plan is to initially introduce this first prototype. Um, I have been, you know, advised, come out with one design first, uh -huh. make it successful, test it, get it out in the marketplace, make it you know, see if it works, and then I'll be introducing the other products. So that's really what I'm doing tonight. I'm introducing it, I'm going to seed 100 products in the marketplace, give them to physicians, uh, cancer care organizations, medical institutions, and have them test it and um, work out any kinks in the product. And if everything's good to go, we'll be in full manufacturing first of the year. You actually talk about your book that you have, My Pain Woke Me Up Bliss. What was what was the inspiration to the adding bliss at the end of the title? Yes, um, I'm just going to grab it for a second here. I wrote my story, my tagline is um, about love, life, um, breast cancer, and the pursuit for happiness. Uh, the reason that I wrote this is I was a, a widow at 28 years old. I wrote about my journey as being a survivor. And the pursuit for happiness is really about my way to experience life and um, continue on with my journey and happiness because being a survivor is all about moving forward in your life and not living it and dwelling it, uh, dwelling on it. It's really about moving forward and, and celebrating life. I love the cover. It's beautiful. I love the artwork. Did you do that? I actually self-published and I did all of it. And um, I, the reason it, it's a little expensive is uh, the soft cover is because I used all four color images and um, Breast cancer is pink, what can I say? So I wanted to use a lot of color, digital images, and um, I, it's also available in ebook, which is not as expensive. <laughs> That's beautiful. So that, this is why I say you're so strong, because you actually could take such a horrible thing and turn it into a beautiful thing. You say you're looking for the pursuit of happiness. That's great. Yes. And uh, I also wanted to you know, take advantage of my digital media and creative media uh, background. And that's exactly what I did with the apparel line. So after I finished writing Bliss, I kept writing and saying, someone needs to come out with a better bra. I had over 13 surgeries. And I decided, well, I think I'm going to give it a whirl and try to develop a bra myself. And so that's what I did with the Crisscross brand. And I've integrated the name into um, taking advantage of my name, uh, Jean Chris, um, based on my first husband, whose last name was Chris. And um, I'm naming the first bra after my aunt who passed away. It's called the Nina Bra. I'm actually um, uh, using the brand itself with the crisscross collection and using every garment will cross across the front. And uh, I have over 20 different proprietary designs that I'm, I've, I've talked about and introduced tonight. That's great. You've been in media for 25 years now? Yes. So you've met so many people to help. You have so many sponsors that were able to contribute to this beautiful event. And so tell us about some of the people you've come across to help you put this together. Yes, um, well, I, as I am a media person myself, um, you know, I've had a lot of different business partnerships throughout my career, and um, actually not as much in the fashion. I'm going to need to meet a lot in the fashion industry, but more in the production area and in um, event planning, et cetera. So, um, you know, I think the fashion new industry is new to me, and I'll be learning a lot more about it. So I just really started to learn about the fashion industry by going to the sourcing and magic shows and uh, a variety of other shows and you know learning about it on uh, by through self-discovery on my own the past about year and a half where could people find out information more about crisscross or contact you yes it's at uh, genechrismedia.com backslash crisscross thank you so much Jean. also do you have any last words anything else that you want to say about crisscross Yes, um, one of my slogans is don't let cancer get the breast of you, and um, I didn't. And, you know, it's really about taking, um, you know, I, I really don't 
wish that anyone has to wear my bra. I hope that you know every survivor really, um, I, you know, just has a positive journey, and that's really my goal, so that people can experience their journey in comfort, style, and chic elegance. And that's really my goal with the lines to provide them a different type of a product that makes them feel comfortable and happy and proud to be a survivor instead of feeling, um, you know, very uncomfortable and humiliated with some of the products that I've seen on the market. I wore numerous bras and really didn't feel comfortable to go to work and step outside of my own little hospital room to get back into the workplace. So um, I think, you know, the designs will really make them feel a lot more confident and look beautiful. And that's really what I have to say the, the line is all about. It's great that people have to go through this and they have someone that cares, you know. They, they're by themselves, but they feel like, okay, there's someone who's thinking about the small stuff, like the compression on our breasts. And it's great that your bride does that. Yes, right. So. Thank you so much, Jean. Congratulations. Thank you. And standing next to me is the technology behind the bra. Trenton Hornick. Hi, Trenton. Hey, Essence. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys taking a little time to actually learn about what is behind it, like the engine of the car, so to speak. So basically, what we have here is we have uh, you know, a very important bra, a very important product that is for a market that us as a company haven't really tapped yet. And what our product does, it actually helps increase circulation. So if you're a breast cancer survivor, you know, you're wearing this bra, you're actually going to speed up your healing time which is pretty phenomenal if you think about it. There's no drugs you're taking, nothing extra you're doing, it's just wearing a garment. And Gene had the amazing idea to take our technology and use it that way. So that's what we've done so far, and I think it's gonna be quite a success. And you know, with the Susan B. Komen Foundation also looking at it and thinking this is important, I think this could be something very big for this market. Cellient's our product, that's our first, very first product. It was invented in the 90s, of trying to find a way to reduce pain in people. Actually, therapeutically provide a benefit without the use of drugs. And that's why the product was invented. It was invented in the 90s, and in 2008, it took the name on as Cellient. And that's when we got adopted by Reebok, and got adopted by Adidas, and Puma, and the big companies. And now, companies like Jeans are our favorite to work with. Because there's people in the industry for a monetary gain, there's people in the industry for a cause. And Jean really has this cause, and really has a mission that she's trying to accomplish, and we are 100% behind that. And I really appreciate her bringing us in as the technology providers. That's an amazing product. How did it get started? What was the origin? Well, actually, it's a funny origin. My father invented the product in the 90s. So he wanted to find a way to help his grandmother's pain management because she was in a car accident. She had a lot of pain. He wanted to find a way to help that without a lot of drugs. So he went to Asia, and he found different technologies that did certain things, and he combined them to make what Salient is. And today, you know, we're in L.L. Bean. We're in Puma. We're in large brand. We're in a fashion brand called Issa Oris based right here in New York City, and now I'm sitting here talking with Essence. Actually, I'm standing, and you're pretty tall, so i got to stand up yeah, straight. It's the heels. It's the heels. <laughs> so I know you use it for so many things. Name some of the things that you use the product for, the material. So recently, our biggest adoption was uh, actually wetsuits. We do the inner lining of the wetsuits called XCEL, X -C -E -L, one of the biggest wetsuit brands in surf, and they, those guys are awesome, based out of California, really cool guys, my home turf. Yeah. We also do a lot of bedding, you know, Simmons over in South Africa does a whole bedding line, we do a lot of bedding in Europe as well, and just recently, you know, we launched with L.L. Bean as a sleeping bag liner, okay. so keeping you thermally regulated while you sleep out in the wilderness. That's amazing. I know Cellient is a special name. Tell us what's so special about the name Cellient. Well, we picked the name Cellient because you're relying on your cells for life. And it comes from the root word. The etymology is cell and reliance. So relying on your cells for life. And the reason you're alive is because your body is producing ATP and cells and keeping you alive. So without that, you wouldn't be standing here as tall as you are. So yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we use that name. So and I know a lot of people are interested and want to, want to be ch check you guys out. Where can they find more about this product, more information? Yeah, so go to www.cellient.com, C-E-L-L-I-A-N-T.com. If you go there, you'll find all the information, you'll find all the brands we work with, all our clinical studies, all of our research, and maybe even a picture of me. I don't know. Probably not, though. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see more come out with the products of Cellient. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Essence. Have a good evening, okay? You too. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Standing next to me is the executive director of the Susan G. Komen North Jersey affiliate. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Now tell us more about the foundation, Susan G. Komen. So the Susan G. Komen Foundation was founded in 1982, and it was founded by uh, Nancy Brinker in honor of her sister who passed away from breast cancer. And she promised her sister she would do everything she could 
to help eradicate this disease and to help those who are most vulnerable uh, to be able to get through the disease through providing screening, treatment support, and survivorship programs. And today, the survivorship rate for early stage breast cancer is 99%, which is a huge success that we have because when the organization was founded, it was only 74%. So we fund breast cancer research, but the crux of what we do is helping people in the local communities to be able to afford mammograms, to have access to a breast health navigator, um, to they stay in treatment, and survivorship programs and treatment support. Well, that's amazing that there's people out there who's going through this process. They know that there's someone who cares and they could go to to help them go through the process and make it a little easier. Absolutely. It's a very scary disease, but it doesn't need to be. One in eight women in their lifetime will be diagnosed with breast cancer, but as I said, the overwhelming majority will survive. 99% of women who are diagnosed early survive. So there's no reason to be scared. It is important for women to get mammograms and to um, provide themselves with that early detection. And if they are diagnosed, to make sure they get into treatment and stay in treatment. There are a lot of programs out there to help people to be able to overcome barriers they have, whether that be childcare, financial barriers, transportation barriers. We fund those programs so that people can stay in treatment. And now you're here at this event for Jean Chris. Tell us more about how you support Chris Cross and Jean Chris. Jean Chris um, was a board member of Coma North Jersey for three years, and she provided us with so many wonderful, wonderful things. So it's only natural that we want to be here to support her as she takes her support of the breast cancer movement to the next level and really looking at the most intimate thing that a survivor goes through, and that is post-surgery and, and those moments uh, when you first know that there are no more breasts mm -hmm. and to have something that's beautiful and comfortable yeah. and that fashionable that, that, that someone can wear that has an opportunity to provide um, a, a place for the drains and not just a, an exit place but also a place to clip them so that they can wear their own clothes that they don't need to wear their husband's oversized shirt or something that they got at the dollar store uh, at the last minute. Um, it, it, all of that goes to the self-esteem and, and to help to really that, 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 that process of recovery starts from the moment that they, they come out of, of the of the surgery and um, it makes them feel beautiful and that's a huge first step. So um, I actually have a family member who is about to have surgery herself and um, I think uh, she will be the first person to test this bra out, I hope. That's amazing. Yes. Well, good luck to her. I wish her the best. Yes. Thank you. Well, I know there's going to be a lot of other people who would like to contribute. If there's anyone else who want to donate and be a part of the foundation, where could they contact you find out your information? Absolutely. Our website is comannorthjersey.org, and they can contact us there um, if they have a breast health crisis and they need help. We're there, and we want to help them. So thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Congratulations on everything. Thank you very much.